All right, in this video, I'm going to go through the four properties, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and just try to give a little bit more detail, maybe some helpful hints for when these properties are used. So the first example I want to look at, kind of this more basic one up here, with this triangle. We have this triangle, and I already marked the things, the given congruencies. So we were given that AB is congruent to DE, so you can see those each have one congruency mark. And then we were also given that BC is congruent to DC. Those each have two congruency marks. So the, the addition property says is if an angle or segment is added to congruent angles or segments, then the sums are congruent. So we want to focus on the conclusion we can make has to do with the sums. So in this triangle, what they're saying is if we add AB plus BC, so we're talking about this entire segment, so you add this small one to this slightly bigger one, we're going to get AC. Now on the other side of the triangle, if we add DE to DC, so again we are adding the slightly smaller one to the slightly bigger one, and you get EC, because the smaller pieces are congruent, that tells us that the sums will be congruent. So AC will be congruent to EC. And when it says then the sums are congruent, we're talking about the larger segments. AC is congruent to EC. That's using the addition property. Now we had to be adding congruent segments. So this one plus this one is equal to ED plus DC. You can see that we're adding the same length of segments for the sums to be total. All right, this one with the angles down here is a little bit trickier, um, but I want to show you how the addition property works on one like this. First, we're given the angle AEB is congruent to angle DEC. So if we mark those congruencies, here's AEB congruent to DEC. So what conclusion can we make? Because a lot of times on these we have to draw a conclusion. Oops, there we go. What I want you to look at is this middle angle, this BEC, okay? We're gonna focus on how this one can get used. So if you take angle AEB, the one that already has a congruency mark, and if we add the blue angle in, so BEC, that's going to get us angle AEC, gives us that bigger angle. So again, we took this congruent angle and we're adding in BEC, the middle one, and it gives us AEC. All right, so if we do the same thing on the right side, if we take this DEC, this angle with the congruency mark, and we add the blue one in, we are getting angle, that bigger angle, D, oops, that's a D, E, B, this bigger one right here. And the addition property says if you have congruent angles, and you add the same angle to each of those, so here I'm adding this blue angle to each of those, then the sums or the larger angles will be congruent. So if I were to draw in that larger angle, it would look like this. AEC, this angle, is congruent to DEB. And we did that by taking the small angle that we already knew was the same and we added in the blue angle to each one so then their sums would be the same. So I guess this conclusion can go right here. All right, last thing about the addition property, I just wanted to give you a couple helpful hints. Um, if, if you're going to use the addition property, that means that the given information will be smaller angles or segments, kind of like up here we were given the smaller um, congruent angles or at the top the smaller congruent segments.
the conclusion, the part that you're able to conclude, will be the larger angles or segments that are congruent. So you want to find what larger angles or segments are congruent when you add up the smaller ones that you're given. All right, so moving on to the subtraction property. Subtraction property says if an angle or segment is added to congruent angles or segments, then the differences are congruent. So let me show you an example. I've got this triangle similar to the last slide. Um, we're given that AB, right here is AB is congruent to ED. So we'll go ahead and mark that congruent. And then also that AC, so this entire side, AC, is congruent to EC over here. Now, here's the way that the subtraction property works. You have to start with the entire segment being congruent, so that has to be given to you. This piece right here, if you have the bigger angle or segment congruent, then you have to think maybe it's a subtraction property. Then what happens is the piece inside that's congruent, they'll have to tell you that one piece on the inside is congruent. If you take that away, what you're left with is going to be this, um, this BC and this DC right here. So if you take the entire segment and you subtract out or take away the congruent piece, what you're left with is going to be congruent on each side. So we can conclude that BC is congruent to DC. All right, so here's another example with some angles. Um, we are given the angle AEC is congruent to angle DEB. So here's AEC. That's kind of that bigger angle right there. So again, I'm noticing it's a bigger angle. It's congruent to angle DEB. So D to E to B. So these two angles are congruent. Now, if you notice, they are overlapping. And the piece that's overlapping is this middle angle right here, this BEC. BEC is part of both angles. You can use the subtraction property and take the bigger angle. So let's say you take AEC, and if you take out this blue angle, this middle one, you will be left with this angle over here. All right, AEB. Do you guys see that? All right, similarly, you can do that to the other angle, DEB. If you take out this blue angle in the middle, what you're left with is CED right here. Well, the subtraction property says if you have, if the larger angles are congruent and you take out a congruent angle, or in this case, we're taking out the same angle, BEC, what you're left with will be congruent. So angle AEB is congruent to angle DEC. We, could, could, we can conclude that using the subtraction property. All right, some helpful hints on the subtraction property. What you are given will always be larger congruent angles or segments. So you have to be told that the whole thing is congruent, either the larger segment or the larger angle. And you also have to be giving that a small part of that. So, you know, something on the inside of that larger angle or segment, um, you, you'll be given one smaller congruent angle or segment that will be part of the larger one. What you will conclude will always be the leftover. If you take the larger one and subtract out the smaller congruent piece they gave you, whatever's left over will be congruent, and that's your conclusion. All right, the multiplication property is pretty straightforward. It just states if segments or angles are congruent, their like multiples are congruent. So for example, we have two angles here. They are congruent. We can see they are both 20 degrees. 
And what they're saying is if you were to take this and let's say double it. So if you're double it, you're multiplying it by two. Well, your 20 degree angle becomes a 40 degree angle over here because we multiplied it by two. Well, the other angle, if you double the angle on the right, 20 times two is also 40 degrees. So there are like multiples, there are new angles right here will be congruent because we took congruent angles and we multiplied them by the same number. So the new angles will also be congruent. All right, last property, the division property, states if segments or angles are congruent, their divisions are congruent. So that starts out with, I'm gonna look at this bottom given information. AC is congruent to EC. So this AC is congruent to EC. So if segments are congruent, that's what that means. We have congruent segments. That will be the larger segment or the larger angle that you have to be given as congruent. Um, now, to say that their divisions are congruent, we need to be told something along the lines of this statement. B and D are midpoints. So if B is a midpoint, that means that AB is congruent to BC. And if D is a midpoint, that means that DE is congruent to DC. So what conclusion can you make? Basically, any of the divisions are congruent. So we could say AB is congruent to DE. Or we could say AB is congruent to DC. You know, we can say this one is congruent to this one over here. So there's more than one conclusion we can make. But basically, you have the larger segment or angle is congruent. If you divide it up evenly, that's what it means, they're divisions, so you have to divide it up evenly with something like a midpoint, then all the smaller pieces will be congruent. All right, some helpful hints on the division property. You need to be given some specific information. Um, the larger segment or angle has to be congruent. So whether it's the angles that you're talking about, the larger angles have to be congruent, or the larger segment has to be congruent. The other thing that has to be given to you is you have to have a midpoint, a bisector, or maybe some trisection points. All three of these will take a larger segment or angle and divide it up evenly. And all of those even divisions will be congruent. So for to use the division property, you have to be given this information.